Hi everyone, this is Dr. Lawrence Bello and then for this video, I will be discussing how to solve for volumes of revolution part uh, using method of cylindrical shells. So first, if for example we have a graph, let's say f of f of x, and then let's just say it's between a and b here. I would like to ask you to rotate this shaded figure about the x-axis. So first is you have to consider um, what type of element to use. In the previous video that we had, if for example, if I use an element that is vertical, the element is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So for that, we will be having or we will be using the method of either disks or washers. So if you can recall in the past video that we had, these are the formulas. So for the method of disks, the volume should be um, the integral between a and b of pi r squared dh. Whereas for the ring, where there is a space between the shaded element and then the axis of revolution, the volume would have the form volume is equal to um, the integral from a to b of pi outer radius squared minus inner radius squared times the dh. Now, for this one, I'll be discussing the method of cylindrical shells, where it will have this formula. I'll show this to you later on. So let's go back. As I said earlier, if the element was vertical, we could use the, the method of disks. However, for this one, let's just use a horizontal element. So if I ask you for the horizontal element, if I were to rotate this, this element about the x-axis, it would take this shape, right? So for this one, um, the formula that I gave you earlier was v is equal to 2 pi r h dr, so integral from a to b. So what's r, what's h? You have to remember that the radius has to always be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So that means this one, that one there, would be your radius. Therefore, if this is the element, the thickness, that one, is your dr. And then the length of this element would then be your h. Hence, the given formula. Okay, so for an example, let's have this. If we have y is equal to x cubed, bounded by this, y is equal to 8, x equals 0, and it's rotated about y equals 8 using a horizontal element. So let's draw this first. So y equals x cubed is something like this. And then... Where's y equals 8? So, if y equals 8, x would then be equal to 2. So, let's just say, let's just say this is y equals 8. So, it's this line. It's that curve. And then x equals 0. So, this is x equals 0. And then rotated about y equals 8. So if I ask you, which one would you take? Because some, you know, definitely it's this shaded portion here, this graph here. So if I were to rotate this about y equals 8, so this is the axis of rotation. Okay, so first question is, what type of element are we going to use? So again, if I use the vertical element, it's going to be method of disks for this one. However, since we are on the topic of cylindrical shells, let's use a horizontal element. Okay, and then let's try, try to draw how it would look like there. So, what are the parts? Okay, let's review again the formula. The formula for the, for the volume, is, volume is 2 pi r h dr. So limit from A to B. Okay, so the parts are R, H, and DR. 
So what's the radius? You have to remember that the radius is always perpendicular or attached to the axis. So that means this is your radius here. For the radius, um, what is it? It's always up minus down. So it's going to be starting from y equals 8 minus this one. You don't know the y value of this. It can take any y value. Now, what about the thickness? This one is the dr. Since it's horizontal, it's a y thickness because it's up down. So dr is dy. So now we're correct because r and dr are both in terms of letter y. What about the x, the, the h, the height? So that means the height of the cylinder, because this one is your cylinder, it has this, this shape. This would be the radius. This would be the height. So for the height, it's going to be right minus left. The right side, so the element touches the equation, uh, the graph of y equals x cubed. And then the left side of that is x equals 0. So, so x equals what? Um, you have to remember that every, since for this one, everything has to be in terms of letter y, you have to transform this into x equals the cube root of y. So that when you transfer it, it's going to be in terms of y. So cube root of y minus what's to the left of that? Minus 0. Therefore, if I were to rewrite the equation, it's going to be integral of 2 pi, the radius is 8 minus y, um, h is the cube root of y, dy. So now we're correct. Everything is in terms of letter y. Okay? And then what's the limit? Okay, the limit has to be letter y limit. That means this element will be traveling from the lowest point of the shaded portion up to the highest point. The lowest point is so far, this one. What's that point? That's 0, 0, the origin. So that's from 0, letter Y. And then this intersection here, remember that that's 2, 8. But we don't care about the 2 because we're looking at the Y value. So 0, 2, 8. Therefore, this is our working equation in solving for the volume. So I just tried to rewrite this up there because I don't have space anymore. However, so let's try solving. So let's remove the 2 pi. We don't need that at the moment. From 0 to 8, and then this one let's distribute. 8 cube root of y minus y cube root of y dy. Or if we simplify, this becomes um, 8 cube root of y minus this is y to the 4 thirds dy. So let's integrate 2 pi 8y to the 4 thirds over 4 thirds minus this one would be y to the um, 7 thirds over 7 thirds coming from 0 to 8. And then let's substitute that so 2 pi, this would then be 8 divided by 4, 2 times 6, y to the 4 thirds minus um, 3 sevenths, y to the 7 thirds from 0 to 8. So that is going to be 2 pi, 6, so cube root of um, 8 is 2. The 4 is 16 minus 3 sevenths cube root of 8 is 2 to the 7. Okay. Minus both 0. So, so we have this one and then this one simplifies to 576 over 7 pi cubic units.
Okay. Okay, so let us have another example, example number two. So for example number two, um, the figure bounded by or the volume of the figure bounded by y equals x, 4x minus x to the third, y equals 0, x equals 0, x equals 2, rotated about the y-axis. So this one, let's factor this out first for the first one. We can factor out 4x, leaving us with um, 1 minus x squared or 4x, 1 minus x, and 1 plus x. Therefore, the graph would look like this. It has three roots. One is 0, 1 is po negative 1, 1 is positive 1. And then, when x is this, this, it's going to be... Okay, it's going to be something like this. So, you have to recall your um, analytic geometry. So, this graph takes this shape. Um, there are three roots and then three changes in um, slope. So, negative, positive, and negative. And then, this one, where's y equals 0? y equals 0 is the x-axis bounded by the graph, the x-axis x equals 0 and x equals 2. So that means it's this shaded portion here. Okay. So let's um, resize that. So if it's this shaded portion, I'll shade it with a different color. Okay. Now, where is it rotated about? It's rotated about the y-axis. So it's about this one. So for it to have cylindrical shell, the element should not be perpendicular to the axis. Perpendicular is like this to this axis of rotation. So that means the element that we should be drawing is something um, for cylindrical shell. It should be parallel to the axis of rotation. This is your axis of rotation. The element is parallel to the axis, not perpendicular. Again, if it's perpendicular, it is either method of disks or method of rings or sometimes it's called method of washers. So for this one, let's draw how the element would look like if it rotates about the axis. So this is your cylinder, cylindrical shell. So again, as I said, the radius is always perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So this is your R, and then this would then be the height of the element, and then that is your DR. Okay, let's label the parts. For the radius, it is from this portion up to the axis of rotation. Okay. Now, if the element is vertical like this, the thickness is an X thickness because the height is a Y height. So that means the DR is DX. What about the height? The height here comes from the highest at it, the highest point of the element up to the lowest. Now, in this case, since the dr is in terms of dx, that is it is dx. That means the variable of integration has to be letter x. Everything has to be in terms of letter x. Again, let's recall the formula for the formula of use uh, for volume using method of cylindrical shells. Volume is two pi r h dr right that means what what do we need we need the radius the height and the dr we already know that the dr is dx so what is the height everything has to be in terms of x now so y this curve y is 4x minus x cubed okay that's 4x minus x cubed Minus the lowest point. It so happened that the lowest point is at the x-axis. So this one is simply minus 0. What about the radius? The radius is coming from this portion up to that. So that portion is any x distance from the axis of rotation up to the axis of rotation. So I can simply say this is x minus 0. So if I were to rewrite the expression for the volume 
volume is integral of 2 pi x times quantity for x minus x cubed dx and then now what are the limits okay since this is in terms of x my limits would be from this portion up to that portion so this is x equals 0 you have to remember that part of the limits earlier was x equals 2 so this is from 0 up to 2 now let's try to integrate this one um, let's move out the 2 pi we don't need that at the moment so for x squared minus x to the fourth let's write it like that dx <clears throat> so 2 pi 0 to oh so sorry 2 pi 4 x to the third over 3 minus x to the 5 over 5 coming from 0 up to 2 so let's plug it in um 2 cube is 8 times 4 32 thirds um minus 2 to the 5 is 32 over 5 and then both of them are multiplied by 2 pi so that means the final answer is 15 okay the final answer here is equal to 128 over 15 pi cubic units so it's that okay so those are two examples of solving for the volume of our rotated area using the method of cylindrical shell so again let's recall <clears throat> for uh, for volumes of revolution we have three formulas first is for the method of disks so when do we use the method of disks um if the element is perpendicular so i wrote it here if the element is perpendicular to the axis of rotation and then the shaded portion does not have any space so it's directly attached to the axis of revolution when do we use the ring or washer this is used when the element is perpendicular to the axis of revolution and then at some point in time the shaded portion has some space between the shaded portion and the axis of revolution and then the last one which is this for this video the method of cylindrical shell the formula for the volume is this one and then when do we use this if the element is parallel to the axis of revolution so just like this this is the axis of revolution and then the element is parallel to the axis of revolution so if you have some questions just please comment on the video and then i will try to answer them as the best way i can thank you very much